And for more on fracking and the environmental impact, I spoke to Anthony Ingrafia. He teaches at Cornell University. We spoke about a recent EPA report on fracking that showed data gaps that prevented any meaningful conclusions to that report. I asked him what caused the gaps and why they exist. In my opinion, we have the data gaps because the oil and gas industry failed to fulfill its promise to the EPA and the American people to collaborate completely and transparently with the EPA in this long study. Uh, they promised that they were going to collaborate with the EPA in doing um, prospective studies. They were going to let the EPA come into places where uh, hydraulic fracturing had not yet occurred and do baseline testing and then do, then do longitudinal monitoring to see if, in fact, there was any impact on drinking water. Uh, but that was a promise that was not fulfilled. Uh, the second reason is that since almost all regulation is done by the states, uh, in many cases the states have fallen down in their regulatory responsibilities and not collected the data they should have collected. Um, and in many cases the data that was collected was not made available to the EPA for various reasons. Where do we see this going internationally, would you say, over the next five years? Uh, there's certainly there's been a lot of reporting on it here in the United States, but internationally, where do you see it going? Uh, shale gas and shale oil are being developed extensively, across, obviously, in many places in the U.S., but also in Canada, also in Argentina, and also in China. Uh, although most of the work so far in China has been exploratory, uh, there are certainly lots of publications that point out the large potential shale resources in China. Uh, there have been uh, attempts to develop shale resources in a couple of countries in Europe that have fallen flat. Uh, so I expect that the, the United States is going to, once again, as prices begin to rise for both gas and oil, uh, increase the intensity of shale gas and oil production. It's, it's really fallen down in the last year and a half or so, but it's, it's going to pick up again. Uh, Canada is going to continue going forward. Argentina is going to go forward. Uh, there are many attempts uh, to get shale gas development, shale oil development going in other countries in South America. Let me ask you about uh, the uh, latest complication, I guess, for someone like yourself who has concerns about fracking, um, this election and the composition of the cabinet that will be working with the president-elect. Are you concerned at all? Uh, more than concerned, frightened. Um, worst nightmare uh, for the environment in general uh, and for climate change and for energy policy. Um, it's, it's the devil's lineup from my point of view. Uh, so I'm very much concerned that um, the work that has been done um, by environmental groups, um, to a certain extent by the Obama administration and by the states, is going to be put at risk. And going forward, it's pretty clear to me that uh, the people of the United States can no longer rely on the federal government for protection. Um, when it comes to environmental issues and especially when it comes to climate change issues and we're going to rely have to rely going forward entirely uh, on the states uh, and that means the people are going to have to get more involved 